is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilt and stain. Just so thankful for the Lord, for his presence, for his work at Calvary. Got to witness water baptism yesterday. One of the orders or ordinances of the church. Another one is communion. And today, as I read these scriptures, I want you to just prepare yourself for celebrating the Lord. In the following instructions, I do not commend you, Paul writing to the Corinthians, because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and I believe in part it's true. For there must also be factions among you in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. When you come together, is it not the Lord's Supper that you eat? For in eating, each one goes ahead with his own meal. One goes hungry, another gets drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and to drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I commend you in this? No, I will not. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night which he was betrayed, he took bread When he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance or remembering me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it remembering me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. So let a person examine himself, then And so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the Lord's body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why so many of you are weak and ill and some have even died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we're judged by the Lord. We are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. And if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home. So that when you come together, it will not be for judgment. About the other things, I will give directions when I come. So you know that the Lord's Supper was the celebration of the Passover. But these Gentiles had no point of reference to the Passover. And so it was turned into a love feast and not just the Jewish remembrance. And apparently the wealthier people were getting the better seats and the wealthier people were getting the better portions 
Some were going away from the love feast, literally drunk. They had so much to eat and drink. And some were going away and they hadn't received anything. And that was Paul's concern. But in this concern, there is something that the Lord has touched my heart with this week. And as I was preparing for this, I felt the Spirit of God say, show people how to examine their heart. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 28, it says, and let's, let's put the slides up here. We have these verses, uh, um, Chris, uh, it should say, examining yourself. There we go. Now, I don't see it. If you could just switch that screen. All right. There we go. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink from the cup. Whoever eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment. So what we're supposed to do is examine ourselves and where judgment or correction needs to be made, we make that so that when we are done, we are actually celebrating what the Lord celebrated and not betraying the Lord, just as happened with Judas and you know how that turned out. So just as a woman is instructed to examine herself to see if there is any kind of beginning stage of any kind of tumor or alarming tissue so the bride of Christ ought to regularly examine herself to see if there's any form of spiritual sickness or disease not long ago I had to address a sister in Christ misbehaving and I shared with her the very basic thing is that we are brother and sister in Christ and our agreement is in Jesus he is the commonality it goes way beyond race it goes way beyond gender it goes way beyond all the other things that divide us and I appealed to her common love for Jesus Christ and then I asked her to reconsider her behavior because publicly she was misbehaving. I wasn't better than her. It's just that she had not been examining herself, so in this situation, I examined her. I don't like doing that. It's much better if we examine ourselves. It's much better when we come together regularly to celebrate all that the Lord has done, that we take a minute and we just ask ourselves a couple of things very quickly. So in Matthew 26, when evening had come, Jesus sat down with the 12. Now as they were eating, he said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful. And each one of them began to say, Lord, is it I? I think that at a minimum, it would be good for us to approach the Lord's Supper to, to celebrate it correctly if we just ask ourselves a simple question, have I betrayed the Lord by my actions, by my words, by my lack of love? There's a real simple remedy. We confess that and the Lord forgives us. By the way, if you need a tutorial on how to repent, it's found in Psalm 51. David, King David said, you know, forgive me of my iniquity, forgive me of my trespasses, forgive me of my sin. Three levels of sinfulness. One is just being human and missing the mark and being a fallen people, fallen in the sense that we fall from the glory that God intended for us. So in that sense, everybody sins. Sometimes we break God's laws. That's called trespassing. And then sometimes there's an even lower level. It's called iniquity. It's when you take anything good and twist it or pervert it and you turn it into something it was never intended to be. 
And David said he was guilty of all three, and he just asked the Lord to forgive him. So if I've betrayed the Lord, all I have to do is say, Lord, I agree with you. What I did is sin. What I did was trespass. What I did was fall into iniquity. I'm going to ask you to stand with me for just one moment. Holy Spirit, help us to examine our hearts to see if there's any way in which we have betrayed the Lord. By the way, I know, I know the way that I have betrayed the Lord. Since the last time we did this, between last month when we celebrated communion and confessed the Lord, and now I know how I've betrayed the Lord. So I'm going to ask the Lord to forgive me. How about you? Examine our heart, Lord. Have we betrayed you? If we have, please forgive us and cleanse us. Amen. You may be seated. Another way that we should examine ourselves, Paul the Apostle said, examine yourself as to whether you're in the faith or not. Test yourselves. Do you not know that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? He's saying, you know, I have to invite the Lord in. It is so simple. I have to invite Jesus in. If you have not invited Jesus into your heart, those of you online watching live stream or later or in this room, if we have not invited Christ in, now's the time to do it. Invite him in. He'll not reject you. He'll come. Ask yourself, have I accepted Christ as my Savior? If not, please do so right now. And last, in Galatians, the Apostle Paul again said, For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work in other words, the fruit that is coming out of my life, is it consistent with the Lord or is it inconsistent with the Lord? If it is inconsistent, then just simply repent and the Lord will forgive you. Amen? Let's just do that right now. Lord, help us to see the inconsistency in our works, in the works of our hands, the fruit of our lips fruit of our lives. Please forgive us and cleanse us. Now, one last time, I'm going to invite you to stand with me. If you would, just stand up here one more time, because we're going to come and serve ourselves in just a moment here. But here's the thing, is the bottom line is simply this. If you have either betrayed the Lord if you've never invited him in or if in some way your life is inconsistent and incompatible with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, all we need to know is that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. I want to teach the bride of Christ to function priestly, Carry this with you into the world. And when people confess their shortcomings and their failures and their sins to you, you then just simply ask them to repent. And once they've repented, then just say, 1 John 8, it says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Is there anyone besides myself that is so thankful for the forgiving and cleansing power of the Lord Jesus Christ?
his grace and mercy towards us. So we've come here and we've examined our heart. If you have, along with me, asked the Lord to forgive you of anything right now, this morning, then on the basis of God's word, I declare to you, according to 1 John 1, 9, since you've confessed your sins, you are forgiven. Because you've confessed your sin, you are forgiven. He has the power, he has the authority, and you have done what you're supposed to do. If you have examined your heart and taken these appropriate steps, then I announce to you in front of the Lord of heaven and earth, you are clean. You are worthy, brothers and sisters, the lack of dealing correctly with our sins is killing us, literally killing us. Unforgiveness is killing us. Unrelented, unrepented anger is killing us. Wrath without reason is killing us. Refusing to accept counsel is killing us, literally killing us. Men's hearts are failing them for fear and the fear comes from the stress of carrying our sin. But not so today for all of you who have come clean before the Lord. You are cleansed. So I'm going to invite you to come, make a single row over here in this aisle, make a single row in this aisle. Come through, serve yourself, go back to your seat. And we'll all partake together. And at the end, we're going to pray that God restores families, that God restores strength, that God brings healing and deliverance and all that we need. those are live streaming with us you can uh, prepare yourself a little communion elements these are from giant I think the cup of juice came from giant as well I don't want to offend anyone, but there's nothing magical or mystical about the, the juice or the cracker. It's the obedience. That's where the magic is. 
Father, I pray your blessing on this emblem of your body that was broken. Your body was broken so that we could be healed. Your body was broken so that the body of Christ can become healthy and strong mentally, spiritually, physically, financially, in every category of measurement of human thriving. You died so that we could be healed. And so we pray your blessing as we partake together of this reminder of your broken body. Let's partake together. I quoted from a old hymn. One more time, I'm going to say, there is a fountain and it's filled with blood. It's drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners who plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilt and stain. Father, I thank you for the cup. I thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all our sin and all our unrighteousness. The blood that carries the spirit, the life of the flesh is in the blood. The spirit, the Holy Spirit, who appropriates the blood of Jesus Christ before the altar in heaven, the blood is still flowing from Emmanuel's veins. We thank you for this cup. We thank you for cleansing and forgiveness of sin. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Let's partake together. So, Lord, I'm asking right now that you would heal our families that you would heal our churches. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would heal our bodies. Lord, we ask that you would heal our nation and her people. Father, I pray for a healing in each city that is represented here today, both in the building and online. Every city where people are at today, I pray for healing in the streets. I pray for healing in our families. I pray for healing in our factories. I pray for healing in our schools. I pray for healing, Lord, in our municipalities and our governments. I pray, Lord Jesus, for healing in the marketplace. I pray, Lord, for healing in our schools and higher education. We pray, Lord God, for healing in this land, in this day, in this time. I believe that you are returning for a people without spot and wrinkle. And it's going to be of the glorious glorious reunion of the body of Christ with her Lord Jesus Christ. And we confess that this gospel is enough to change a man's heart. It's enough to change a school. It's enough to change a government. It's enough to change a president. It's enough to change a Congress. It's enough to change a drug addict. It's enough to change a prostitute. It's enough, Lord Jesus, to change the drug addict. It's enough to change the alcoholic, Lord. It's enough to change, the, uh, uh, the, the Lord Jesus, the, um, the gambler. It's enough to change a corrupted world and create a soothing aroma that goes before you into heaven. And so we lift our hands and we bless your name 
and we bless this house, we bless these people, we bless this family, we bless their families, Lord Jesus. We bless this city, we bless this state, we bless this country, we bless in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, men and women, boys and girls, young people, far and wide. We bless our missionaries who carry the gospel to other places we are not at, but you're taking them there. We bless them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.